Good morning and welcome to WGN TV Political Report. I'm Paul Listing. We start this morning in Washington where Democrats in the House are claiming victory no matter how short lived it may be. The bill back better bill is passed. On a narrow party line vote, the House approved President Joe Biden's massive social spending bill, the Build Back Better plan, early Friday morning. House Republicans pulled every move they could to slow down the process, including an eight-hour overnight speech from GOP leader Kevin McCarthy. But after weeks of negotiations, the $1.7 trillion deal is headed to the Senate, with just one Democrat and every Republican congressperson voting no. The plan would drastically expand Medicare care, enhance the social security uh, safety net, and fight climate change. It's historic, it's transformative, it's bigger than anything we've ever done. We have so much agreement within the bill. The biggest uh, uh, challenge was to meet the vision of President, President Biden. The plan passed on Friday would open access to more affordable child care and provide universal preschool for three and four year olds. The bill will need the support of all 50 Democrats to pass and it's likely to face some changes before it would become law. Now, Congresswoman, good morning. Thanks for joining me again. It's a pleasure. Good Thank to you, see Paul. you. So Friday, Build Back Better passes $2, tr $2 trillion human infrastructure bill. The Republicans say it's wasteful socialist spending. The Democrats say it's transformational. Uh, the Democrats say it, there's no cost. The CBO says, but it's $160 billion. What's the truth of this? Well, the truth of it, of it is, is that we have all the data that says that not only is this paid for, but in fact, it is transformational. Let me give you an example. 740,000 Illinois families with kids from zero to five will pay no more than 7% of their income for child care. What does that mean not only for kids but for moms who are going to be able to go back to work? Because during this pandemic, a lot of women have been unable to actually be in the marketplace. So um, th it's just absolutely huge for seniors. We're going to be able to have um, home care. It's, it's fabulous. So not one Republican voted for it. They think it's an election year issue. It is good for, they think this is going to be a bad thing uh, when, it, when it passes. And my question for you is, do the Democrats have to learn to be better sellers of what they pass? There are some who say, Democrats say, we know what you want and we got it for you, as opposed to, we heard you and oh, we got this. You know, we have heard, and I can tell you from my own district, of the kind of calls that we could, we were getting about not having having um, be, be able to afford their health care. This is transformational also in terms of and dramatic in terms of making health care more affordable for families. These are the kinds of constituent calls I was getting all during this pandemic. And, and so this is not made up stuff. Do, do we think that you want to be able to have a child tax credit that could actually reduce child poverty in half? No, these are things that families really, really need. So Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina tweeted, nobody asked for this. Not you know, true. I, you know, I don't know what district he lives in, but I know that people are really suffering. People want paid leave, for example. This bill that we passed gives four weeks at least. We wanted more of, uh, of paid leave. So a provision that Illinois cares about, the SALT provision, state and local taxes, I think is in there. That is to say we increase the, our deductions again beyond that $10,000 limit. Senator Bernie Sanders says that's got to go because only the 1% appreciate that. He doesn't live in Illinois. I was Say. Does that save? Does that get saved? Well, I'm hoping that it does. In the in the Senate, of Illinois is one of those high state, high tax states of state and local taxes, so it'll help a lot of people here in uh, in Illinois. People are very angry about inflation. Costs are going up. You see it. We all see it. And the, the fear is that this the Build Back Better plan is is going to make life worse economically for the country. What? How will this play out economically for people? And how quickly will we feel it? So, you know, actually. This bill is, is kind of an inflation buster because of what it means that families will have lower costs. They will be able to have things that they could have not been able to afford, that they will actually get covered by this bill. And, and so, like the, like the child care, for example, um, so this is going to actually be helpful to families. And by the way, for seniors, right, there's hearing aids in there. Not everything got in, but I think the hearing aid Hear, piece got hearing, in. Hearing aid piece got in. Um, 
150 billion dollars for home and community-based care got in there so there's plenty for seniors as well what did pass what is signed into law already infrastructure so I'm sort of curious Gina McCarthy was on my show uh, recently and she talked She's about right. what Illinois gets let's talk about your district what will your district see from the infrastructure bill so we saw a lot look at we have plenty of bridges and roads but the other thing that we have we have lots of lead in our pipes and this bill finally and Illinois has the worst the highest number by the way of pipes with lead in them this is a real danger to our children to our communities and so that's a big deal for us one thing that of course everybody's been touting certainly Democrats the jobs that come from this and, and there are a lot of jobs but here was something interesting there was a report that says actually a lot of the construction work in general is going to be in predominantly male dominated positions even Senator Dick Durbin acknowledged this disparity what is there any way to address that? Yes, the Build Back Better bill actually will help women because a lot of help for home, for workers especially in the caregiving industry you know these are low jobs the average home care worker makes about 12 bucks an hour around the country that's not a living wage and so often these jobs that are held by women often women of color immigrants um, are going to be uh, we're going to help raise those wages I know it's uh, politics is involved in everything well, I think what was really surprising is that even this the infrastructure bill was bipartisan it's it's roads it's bridges it's things people and yet some of your Republican colleagues getting death threats over this overpassing it I mean once again how is it that that the people can get the message that maybe this one bill which is historically has been bipartisan as this was is not a terrible thing you know I've never seen this before this is really new I've been in the Congress now for 22 years this kind of antagonism that we see that's really generated by the Republicans in the House of Representatives, um, hardly any voted for even the infrastructure bill, um, and and the uh, they want to take away the um, committees for those Republicans who voted for what you said. You're right; has always been a bipartisan bill. Infrastructure has always been Republicans and Democrats. While you're here, I do want you to talk a little bit about the Inform Consumers bill that just passed out of Energy and Commerce uh, this past Wednesday. What will that do? So, you know, a lot of consumers are feeling that even when they, they order through Amazon and they order products, as more and more people are because of the pandemic, that they are often counterfeit. They're not exactly what they looked for. We now make um, platforms like Amazon to actually ve uh, verify that these um, people, that these companies that advertise on their platform are legit so that consumers will have confidence. And again, this is bipartisan. I was very proud of that. So that's from committee, so now it has to go to the House. It, it passed through the full committee, has to pass the House. But I, you know, we made the deal. I think that we're going to get it done. All right. I also wanted to ask you briefly this past week, Paul Gosar, uh, you know, was, was uh, removed from his committee. He was censured. Uh, but here's the thing, and I know you, you supported that, you voted for that, as did two Republicans, uh, Cheney yes. and Kinzinger. But here's the thing Kevin McCarthy, who, who gave a speech basically saying the rules are for thee and not for me, that, that speech that he gave. Um, Gosar has the anime back on, uh, he tweeted it again. And are you worried about the poisoning of the of the politics, even though what Congress did may or may not have been the right thing? You know, you have to decide where the line is. And when someone shows the actual murder of a member of Congress that he was killing um, a, a, a member, I'm sorry, there is a line that we have to say this is inappropriate behavior. And I think that it was important that we we draw that line and that we do censure him. I, I was proud to vote for that bill. Well, Not happy about it, but I, I felt it was important to do. Um, a quick look at 2022. Look, history would say Republicans will take the House. It's history, right? It's just what happens in the, in the off-presidential year. Um, and polls are showing Republicans with a 10-point lead of people wanting them to, to take over. My question for you is, um, well, two points. On a local issue, what was your reaction when the Illinois legislature legislated a district that now put two of your colleagues, uh, Sean Cast and Marie Newman, against each other, costing one of them a job? I was disappointed in that. Of course, it looks like the way the map was drawn that we can actually, as Democrats, have a net one-seat gain 
in um, in Illinois, even though we're actually going to lose a, a district in, in Illinois. But I certainly think they're both great members of Congress and disappointed in that. And if history is right and the Republicans do take control over the House, is it an undoing of all that's been accomplished during these I, years? There's no question, and that's why... Um, it's not an option for us to lose the House of Representatives. We're going to see all the good that was done, and we will see the Trump agenda take over fully in the House of Representatives. But the polls I see only is a two-point lead right now in the swing states um, for, uh, for, for Republicans. And when we do get that message out about all the good, and when people feel it in the morning when they wake up, that government really has helped me in my life, and I think that we're going to see that, that we're going to be able to, and, and that the Republicans opposed it all the way. We'll win. Um, the other thing is, regardless of who's controlling, um, obviously it's an election year, and some would say, that's it, nothing else is going to get done. The voting rights efforts, there are big things on Demo the Democrat agenda, would you say, we're missing, it's just not going to happen, it's too late? No, I actually think that we have to do something. When we see the, part of the partisan gerrymandering, gerrymandering, that is drawing the lines of these districts in a number of states like North Carolina, where, you know, they change it from now there's five Democrats down to three just because they draw the lines. That's happening in Georgia as well. Of course, as well. it happens here too for Democrats. You know, not in the, in, in the way that we are seeing right now in the particularly in the south and we can't organize our way out of that we have to get the congress of the united states to act and say that it's not legal to do that you know john lewis di almost died for fighting for the Voting Rights Act, um, and finally we got the President of the United States and the Congress to change it. We need to go in that direction. We're going to need um, the Democrats to, I think, hold the filibuster. Back. Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, thanks for being with me. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving you break, too. and then go back to Washington you and too. do what you got to do. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Well, we did reach out to members of Illinois' Republican congressional delegation to talk about these bills. They declined. We hope to check in with them later this month. We're going to take our first break, and up next on WGN-TV Political Report, we're going to City Hall. With just two weeks left until a major deadline, there is no compromise on a new ward map for the city of Chicago. And it's a battle for power for several groups across the city. So stay with us.